Drew, you've spent a um, couple of years in the construction industry now, um, hardcore into it. Um, you've run into interesting personalities in the construction industry. Um, what are some of the dominant traits that you've come across in different personalities that work in construction? Can you give us some of those yeah. different insights or ex- your experiences? Yep. It's it's a useful, I suppose, there's, there's so many different personality models and behavioral models and a lot of the people I come across have done, you know, something like Maya Spriggs or DISC or Wealth Dynamics and different different models. And they're really useful, but what often is the challenging bit, you get your printout, you got this big document, it, you know, almost accurately tells you all about yourself, but when it comes to human exchange or human transacting, it doesn't matter what your sort of report, you know, says – it's actually how you show up and how you're experienced. And what I mean by that is if you and I are in the trenches, and I could literally mean in the trenches in construction, but I was like, well, you yeah. know, there's a consequential environment that we're committed to. We're trying to get stuff done and we're trying to perform. We're not going to be a bit of this, a bit of that. You know, we can't sort of just be however we want. We're going to default to what are the ways that our personality or dominant behavior you know, uh, plays out or guides us to get shit done, Yeah, you know, and that's an easy way to say it is we've all got a dominant set of traits and everything and characteristics, but they get even more enhanced when we're in consequential situations and trying to get things done together, right, which is most of the time. Which is all the time. Exactly. (laughs) And if you're mindful and you're aware and you've done a lot of work on yourself and everything, you can maybe turn on different characteristics and different behavioural styles that maybe aren't actually your unique sort of temperament or the the way that you'd normally act but most of the time we will default to especially in groups that's the that's the key thing when we get into social groups and and groups and teams it gets even more predictable how our personality comes across yeah for example like you as we've talked about your supervisionary you've got that big picture thinker you can sort of do a little bit of the analytical you know skeptical stuff but you're definitely that very gregarious, sociable, you know, ready, fire, aim sort of personality, right? Yeah. Ready, now, fire, aim. That yeah. sounds about right. Now, <laughs> could you, you know, yeah. if you were like really bringing a kind of presence of mind, be super analytical or super action oriented or, yep. you know, the different, yeah, you could. But if we're working on a project, you're probably most of the time going to behave the way I just described. Right. And we've experienced this. 100%. And there's the assets and the liabilities and the goods and the bads of all of that. Right. Yeah. For me, I'm a very sociable, gregarious, very sort of relational sort of person, right? I'm all about people. I'm very in the present moment, quite disorganized, but chaotic. Now I've learned to play lots of different roles. But again, when we're in like consequential transactions together, I'm going to, you know, if you're getting upset about something, I'll probably be all worried about the relationship and concerned for that. Or if we've yeah. got a problem. A why is Andy annoyed? What's yeah, going or if we say we're on a construction yeah. site and we've got a problem and everyone's like, ah, I might not be the, right, I'm going to figure out a solution. I'm going to analyze it. I'm going to solve it. I might be like, is Andy okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Like I yeah. might default to I'm going to take care of all the people because everyone's all crazy, You're going crazy, to default right? to the carer, yeah. That's right, the carer, right? And so when you work in construction or any, any area, you, you see all the different types of temperaments and behaviors and everything start to play out. In our model at Influential You with our transactional competence stuff, we have the judge, which is the more analytical, skeptical type person, a lot of rules, a lot of standards. There's a right way to do things and there's a wrong way to do things. And now and then you'll get on the receiving end of this is the wrong way to do it. And (laughs) they can can be a bit prickly sometimes. Usually they're just super committed to safety and protecting things. And they've collected a library of a catalog of evidence from the past as to why that situation is going to be dangerous or not work. You know, sometimes they'll be very vocal and people will be like, whoa, why are you so negative? How come you can't see the big picture? It's like, because yeah. they don't see big picture, dummy. Yeah. Like, because don't get annoyed their, at them. Personality. You yeah. know, and I have this saying, which I think is a good one if you write this one down or remember this one, is if you hop into a cage with a lion, right? Imagine that. Jump in the cage with a lion. Even if it's a tame lion. If you back that lion into a corner and it mauls you, should you be upset with the lion? Well, it's 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 the lines of nature to mold somebody. Exactly. A, so if your nature, does what a lion does, right? yeah, if your nature, I'm not ragging on the more skeptical people. They're actually my favourite. We should listen to them more. Yeah. But in in, in construction, there's a lot of engineers. Yeah. There's a lot of analytical brains, 
And they're often like, whoa, risk adverse, you know, be careful, watch out, it's not going to work. Analysis, you know, paralysis by analysis. And if we kind of go, oh, I can't deal with you, you're just too negative or you're too blunt, it's like you're missing a whole opportunity to learn how to work with a kind of person where you could get massive value if you simply understood how to work with that, you know, that type of character. And extract the value that they actually bring. Yeah, like yeah. in a meeting – before they open their mouth and remove all doubt about how angry they are about how terrible someone did some sort of process or procedure because they got to the point where they felt they had no voice and they were pushed aside and then they blow up and everyone goes, oh, God, they're so, you know, how about you go, great, we're going to have a meeting, we're going to talk about all these problems and these issues and start to speculate on them and, you know, if you're the sort of more analytical guy, like Andy will come to you in a moment. I want to give you like a real opportunity to kind of pull this all apart and maybe look a bit more at where we're going wrong and everything, but we'll come to you. But let us just kind of speculate a bit first and do that first. Now I've invited your assessments. You know you don't have to open your mouth and interject because you're just getting so frustrated this is a lot of bullshit. Which, which I wouldn't right? say. <laughs> and you're about to get your turn at some point, but yeah. let's do the part first where it's all fluffy and colourful and coming up with solutions, and then you can rip the solutions to shreds. Yeah. Right? Or when you've got someone who's a real doer, like action-oriented, they love their lists. Yeah, get a, get a full checklist of things that they want yeah. to do. Yeah. They need to be included in stuff. Yeah. But they often will end up having to do a bunch of work that no one – took them through the journey of how we got there and they want to do a good job and now they're all frustrated because they don't exactly know what they're meant to do or how they're meant to do it and all of that. And and so when you're working in teams and on construction sites and in the whole, you know, in the service area of a business, all of it, it's important to rather than go, oh, that person's just an asshole, they're really difficult to deal with. I hear that a lot. Well I don't yeah. want to talk to that person. They're just they're just too difficult. Yeah. That's not ever going to be a very productive way that's, that's of healthy getting either. things done, yeah. especially leaders. I hear it, leaders and businesses will say that kind of thing. Oh, really? Yeah, like someone else's department. Like, oh, I'm not going to – I can't deal with them. I just don't talk – you know, uh, that, I don't deal that, with them. That happens a lot, yeah. But yeah, rather seen, like, I've hold on a minute. Yeah. What if you flip that and went, rather than I don't want to deal with them because they're just rude or arrogant or whatever it might be, right? Because they'll, what they'll be pointing to is an aspect of their personality yeah. or their dominant behaviour – that probably got expressed in a heated meeting or a consequential meeting, but that person was just defaulting to what, like I said, the lion. Yeah, yeah. Doing Went what the lion, lion would do, corner, right? Yeah. And I'm trying to work with people to go, hey, how about what you do is develop your capacity and your ability to deal with other people's behaviours and personalities. Or transact with them more effectively exactly. so you get the most value out of them. Rather than go, Andy needs to be less – big picture and running so fast and like, shit, you're too slow. I'm just going to get on with it anyway, which is again, what we've worked on together. Of yeah. You just get irritated because people are freaking idiots and don't understand. And you've already said it once, you know, once if I say it once, isn't that enough? Like that's a common thing for your sort of personality. Like, <laughs> it is true. you know, and then if they're not doing the thing you need them to do, you just bulldoze through them. Right. Yep. Now, I, I, does it get stuff done? Of course it does. Yeah. But is it effective? a great experience and, do you end up having the ones that love Andy because he's super direct and super at the point and super matter of fact? Yeah, you'll get your the Andy club. Yep. Then you get the ones that are like fucking Andy. Yeah, Andy he's club. just a pain in the ass, man, or he's too much, or he just doesn't, you know, have any patience or whatever. Yeah. And it's like that yeah. that um, can create real fracturing of teams. Yeah, and, and then there's and all that, those that starts the creation of silos as yep, well. Yeah, back channels. It? Yeah. Again, I get to see everything, right? Because I yeah. talk to leaders, executives, everything, and I, I get to hear all the it stuff. It sounds like you have an exciting job, though, eh? Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's not, there's no, um, what do you call it? It's always got lots of entertaining and novel things happening all the time. Yeah. I, 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 I'm not often surprised or shocked at some of the things I hear. It's more humid by, humid by, you know, humans and how predictable we are. Can I, can I actually throw another question in there? Um, you've worked in multiple other industries. Yeah. How would you compare construction to the other industries in terms of personalities? Um, oh, definitely construction is heavily weighted towards the, as I said, those action-oriented real, you know, we call them like the producers the um, in the 
disc model. They're like the C's. They're like, they, they love routine. They love stability, love consistency. They love just getting shit done. And a lot of the analytical ones I said, the more skeptical oriented data, you know, it's very weighted towards that a lot. Yeah. You don't get a lot of the likes of me, even a little bit your personality where we're a lot more like constructive, creative, relational, all about people, high EQ, yeah. right? Like there's less of those. There's quite a few of the visionaries, but not as many. And so you, it is dominantly a couple of main personalities if you go with the four-part model yeah, yeah. and less of the others. Yeah, right. And that, that so, does so, so cause what inherent are the, problems. Yeah, that, that would sway the it entire does. industry one way, wouldn't yep. it? So, so what are the dominant models that you've seen? What are the dominant types that you've seen? Can you um, name them? The, oh, yeah, like your classic analytical, data-driven sort of engineer types have, yep. have come from that space. So they – they struggle to make decisions. You know, so right. on, on a lot of executive teams and leadership teams, you know, people get so frustrated because it just goes round and round and yeah, round. Like they just get stuck in consideration. And then when they do make a decision, it's like they just rush straight to action, right? There's not <laughs> so, then like the sound whole like somebody you know? <laughs> buy-in in the meeting of the minds. And then, and then there's, you know, just a, a quite heavily weighted amount of, you know, people in the industry that are, that are naturally those doers, those workers. They just like to, they yeah. don't like a lot of fluff. They don't like a lot of talk. They just, they just like to. They just want to put up concrete. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah, they just want to get poor, shit done. They love poor concrete, consistent, repetitive, you know, yeah. stuff, which again, you need it in the industry. They follow processes. Yeah. They love systems. They like rules. Yeah. But I think. What, what could the industry use more of in, uh, in your opinion? Well, this, this, this isn't to sound biased, but the kind of personalities like mine, which is where, we're very grounded in if you're going to make this plan and you're going to sort of commit your resources in this way, here's how it'll land with the people, right? Like I get a lot of people use me and there's a couple other people I'm working with in, in the industry where they're like a unicorn in their team. They're the very relational, gregarious, high EQ sort of people and they often don't get used for that skill set. They often get said, oh, you talk too much, you're too enthusiastic, mm. you get so frustrated because we're all spinning around in circles and you're just pull, pulling your hair out and then you get a bit dominating and, you know, you're too vocal and they get sort of pushed aside a bit. Like we're just this annoying presence where we can see shit that once you've done all the thinking and the analysing, before you get down to doing, we can go, hold on a minute. Pause this is what's going to happen with that person and that, and that's how it's going to land there. And if you say it this way, it's probably going to go like that. How so, do you frame the message? To yeah. How do you people? communicate? How do you frame it? How do you not have it be like a sledgehammer over the head when you were not trying to do that, but now it came out and you're like upset a whole bunch of people. So that's definitely utilizing way more of that resource where people have got a lot higher level of skill of human, you know, sort of, communication and getting that buy-in. Yeah. I was sort of, another way I says the negotiators. The negotiators. The yeah. ones that are really good at having those conversations, having those dialogues to get people all aligned. You know, that's a big missing so far that I've seen. Bringing everybody on the same page. Yeah. Break down those silos. Yep. Get everybody working together. I mean, this is so important in construction. Eh? Yeah. So like the important. connectors, you know, the ones that yeah. connect people. Mm. Uh, I got this back to sort of different industries. It's a big tech company in the US worked with for many, many years, huge, like 75,000 people. And one of their engineers, who's a longtime client of ours, she created herself as like an engineer whisperer. Oh, yeah. It was two clients actually, both <laughs> similar, one in Perth, one in, in, in Silicon Valley. And they both worked in the engineering construction mining industry. And their whole role was brokering engineer speak and like marketing and sales speak, like getting, getting cross-functional teams to be able to talk because – they're both engineers and uh, incredible women engineers, you know, as I hate to say it as well, like, you know, fighting up a lot in the industry, but well-respected, but they also figured out they can crack the code of these frustrated, irritated, you know, engineers and, you know, people who just don't get these weird humans who don't seem like they do any work at all. They <laughs> just talk a bunch of crap and come up with good ideas and, you know, but brokering them to be able to communicate is a very amazing skill. Yeah. I and so fi I would say in any, any construction business, engineering business, finding those sorts of people who can be your communication brokers is a way to say it 
it's such a valuable resource. I mean, hundred percent. That's what I think you're much needed in the New Zealand construction scene. You're really, really valuable to the industry, man. Yeah, man. and I'll shout out I'm, to I'm, Laura. I'm, I'm, I'm not even like blown smoke up your ass here. I'm being genuinely honest. I appreciate it. And, it's and in working with you for six six months, I understand the value you bring. Yeah. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. shout out to Laurel McClay, who's my colleague who does a lot of work. She's down in Dunedin. She's been working in engineering construction for years as well. And so yeah. the two of us are the same personality. So we just, you know, we we love, you know, just bringing yeah. empathy and love and sounds a bit woo-woo, but just, you know, these sort of frustrated people who just can't seem to, how do we communicate? Yeah. We just seem to be missing the mark so much. It's like it's it's actually simple, but – you need a bit of a code or like an algorithm, which some of the frameworks we use just go, ah, oh, it's actually if they simple. look like that and they say that and I say it like this, they don't get upset or it went really smoothly. And so there's, there's there are frameworks that can help. Hundred percent, yeah, yeah. And I've sort seen of codify and, that human. And experience. I love Laurel as well. Shout out. Yeah, Laurel. you know Laurel. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, so, I haven't met her in person. I can't wait to meet her in person. Yeah. But so her and I have a mm-hmm. massive commitment to to making a making a difference. I'm not saying yeah. it'll transform the industry because it's just that'll probably never happen as far as you know the the perfect uh industry but never say never mate you, you, you could be revolutionizing the industry we'll in do a lot of, well, i think we can yeah. make a difference you know yeah, make, 100%. And, and i, I believe change. you will but one of my mentors who's been in the industry a long time he's like look just don't be your classic self and go i'm going to transform the industry and because he's like he's been at 30 Calm years down. and it's slow change yeah. but yeah if i can make a few few impacts on some people who are pretty significant in the industry i'll be pretty happy Awesome, mate. Yeah, wish you all the best of that. I'm sure you'll do amazing things.